Welcome to Jazz Learn's Big Number Journey. Today, we will be going up to some extraordinarily large numbers. Are you ready? Let's go. Our first number is SSCG3, also known as Simple Subcubic Graph 3. In order to understand how this number is created, we must play a game similar to the game we played to create tree 3. In this game, we will create graphs from vertices and edges. The first rule of our game is that each graph that is created can have up to n plus k vertices, where k is the number that is substituted into the sscg function and n refers to the graph number. For example, if we substituted 0 into the sscg function, the first graph could have a maximum of 1 vertex, as the k value is 0 and n is 1, as it is the first graph in the sequence. Our second graph could contain a maximum of two vertices, as k is still 0 and n is 2, due to this being the second graph in our sequence. And our third graph could contain a maximum of three vertices, as k is still 0 and n is 3. Our next rule is that each vertice can have a maximum of three edges coming out of it. So there could be 0, 1, 2 or 3 edges coming out of a vertex, but no more. Finally, our third rule is that no earlier graphs can be homeomorphically embeddable into a later graph. What this means is that each new graph that we create must have a structure such that we cannot remove vertices, remove edges or merge vertices to produce an earlier graph. In this example, the earlier graph is deemed to be homeomorphically embeddable into the later graph since we can transform the later graph into the earlier graph. So now that you understand the rules, let's play the SSCG0 game. Since we substituted 0 into our SSCG function, the value of k is 0, meaning that our first graph will have a maximum of 1 vertice. As a result, our second graph in the sequence must be an empty graph, as any graph with vertices would result in the first graph being homeomorphically embeddable into our second graph. After the second graph, we have three vertices to use, but we cannot create any graph, as all possible graphs will violate the game's rules. Because of this, the maximum number of graphs that we can produce is 2, so SSCG0 is equal to 2. The next game that we will play is the SSCG1 game. In this game, our first graph can contain up to two vertices, as the value of k is now 1, and the value of n is 1, so n plus k is 2. Our second graph can contain up to three vertices, our third graph can contain up to four vertices, and so on. It turns out that this arrangement of graphs shown here is the best we can do in this game, so SSCG1 is equal to 5. One interesting thing to note is that if we were to look at the optimal arrangement of graphs for every SSCG game, we would find a trend of increasing graph sizes up to a certain point, and then a decrease in graph sizes, ending with a single vertex and an empty graph. The reason this occurs is because smaller graphs tend to be homeomorphically embeddable into the bigger graphs, so by putting these graphs after the bigger graphs, we can avoid violating the homeomorphic embedding rule. In the SSCG2 game, our first graph can contain a maximum of three vertices, our second graph can contain a maximum of four vertices, and so on. It is here that we see a major increase in the number of possible graphs, reaching up to approximately 10 to the 10 to the 29 graphs in the best possible game. This number is astronomically large. But we came for SSCG3. How big is this number? The maximum number of graphs that we can create in this game can be expressed as being greater than the iteration of the tree3 function tree3 times. If you don't know how big tree3 is, you can go watch the video that I made about it, link in description. And if you do know how big tree3 is, then you can get some idea of how astronomically large this number is. But this number is essentially nothing in comparison to the next number that we are going up to. 
Our next number is known as SCG13, or subcubic graph 13. This number is created by a game that is very similar to the game we just played. However, there is one slight difference that has a major impact on the size of the numbers that we can create. This difference is that we can now use curved edges in our graphs. As a result, the SCG0 game can create 6 graphs and so has a value of 6. Moving to the SCG1 game, we see an extraordinary jump in the number of graphs that we can produce. In fact, SCG1 is already larger than Graham's number, another astronomically large number that is explained in depth in my Tree 3 video. If SCG1 is already bigger than Graham's number, imagine how astronomically massive SCG13 is. This number has been studied by mathematicians a lot, and it is known that the lower bound of this number is around SSCG55. Although this number is astronomically large, it pales in comparison to our final number in our big number journey. The last number that we will visit on this journey is a number known as Bigfoot. Bigfoot is an extension of another astronomically large number known as Rayo's number. As shown in my video about Rayo's number, Rayo's number is defined using a mathematical language known as first order set theory. Bigfoot, however, is defined by a mathematical language known as first order oodle theory, or foot for short. Foot is an extended version of first order set theory. The definition of foot of n is the largest natural number defined in the language of first order oodle theory in less than n symbols. Bigfoot is defined as the following expression, where the superscript of 10 indicates that the foot function is iterated 10 times. As a result, the Bigfoot number can be written as the following. There are no words to describe the astronomical magnitude of this number. Even if you took the brain power of every human on the planet, you would not even be able to come close to the comprehension of this number. And that was Jazz Learn's Big Number Journey. If you have any other ideas on where you'd like to journey next, you're welcome to leave them in the comments below.